Fabulous. Uh, well, thank you, first of all, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. It's wonderful uh, to be in Istanbul. And congratulations on the, on the show thus far, which has been, I mean, hugely successful in the States. Uh, the highest rate new show, I think. That is correct. Uh, I mean, for the, as, as successful, I mean, how do you feel about that? It must be fantastic to feel. <laughs> got a nice big smile there. <laughs> yeah. Mean, well, you know, it's kind of like being alive. It's, it beats the option. You know, what's, what's, what's your other... Oh, what's the alternative? Uh, we could have been canceled. The, um, we, you know, CBS has a really great track record of knowing how to put things in front of an audience and uh, that they will enjoy. Um, but by the same token, uh, there were a lot of shows last year that, um, that didn't survive. And, and I was telling my wife, who's never been with me as an unemployed actor, uh, she's only known me as NCIS and working. And so I said, you know, <laughs> most of the people in my, in, in my position are, are unemployed. They've, you know, Screen Actors Guild is not, I think it's 97% unemployed by union. So that's, you know, I'm very happy to be working. So, I mean, for UK audiences who are about to experience season one, can you just tell us a little bit about the show and the character that you play? Yes, uh, I play Dr. Jason Bull, who is, <laughs> he's the kind of maverick outsider, outside the box thinker who puts together uh, a strategy for you to win your trial. Whether you are the defendant or um, the prosecutor, whether you are, um, uh, but you always have to be innocent. I, I should be very clear. He doesn't represent guilty people. Um, although they may look very, very guilty at the time. Uh, Bull puts together a, a, a way to tell the story of his client that makes him uh, special. This is, not a lot of people do what Bull does. Our show is uh, based on um, the experiences of Dr. Phil McGraw, who is known now for, um, you know, helping people with their problems on daytime television. But Phil very importantly helped uh, Oprah Winfrey with some problems she was having 20 years ago. And that's the world that we explore is, uh, it's called trial sciences. Dr. Jason Bull is one of those characters um, that at first seems maybe uh, a little difficult to know, sort of a cipher, a little uh, removed, not very open. But really, he's, he's watching and trying to understand as many things as he can at once. And the world of the show that takes place during a trial is uh, something that we're all familiar with, which is um, guilt or innocence. And whether you're my three-year-old son, who swears he did not eat those last three chocolates, but we all know the truth. Um, we, we love being sure of things in the world. And one of the great things about a show like Bull is it gives you a feeling that these things can be solved and that the right people uh, are, are free at the right time and that uh, because as we know in the world, um, I mean, you know, no wrongdoing goes unpunished. <laughs> <laughs> was, he, was he involved in the, the process? I know he co-wrote the, the pilot. Mm. Did you get to meet him and kind of learn from him about his experiences? His, his of life? Oh yeah, Dr. Phil um, has experiences, and he will share them with you, that are fascinating. But he also has, and it's almost like a magician, when they're a little unsettling to talk to. Because even though you know there's no such thing as magic, really, there is such thing as being afraid of another human being. <laughs> and Dr. Phil is, I, I don't use a lot of Phil's personality. Uh, I don't have a Texas uh, drawl uh, or accent. But... His insights and his ability to make you a little uncomfortable because of the way that he looks at you, I have tried to employ, in my own sweet yet sinister way, 
I try to employ those uh, those tools. There's a great creative team behind this as well. You've got Paul Paul Atanasio, mm -hmm. who was on House, and which I didn't know until this morning. Steven Spielberg is part of the creative team. Because I believe it's Amlin who are producing it. I mean, that's right. You get to, I mean, meeting him must have been quite an experience as well. Yes. So, you know, getting on board Bull, I was looking at maybe taking some time off after NCIS. I had plans to travel with my wife and family. It didn't happen. Um, but the phone call came that there was this show, uh, and it had a great creative team behind it. Paul Atanasio, who created some very interesting um, characters in cinema, like Donnie Brasco and... Uh, Ray Fine's character in Quiz Show, which was which was based on uh, a true story, and also Homicide, Life on the Street, and um, House, and he was involved in the the creation of House, and a guy named Rodrigo Garcia who did a show called In Treatment with Gabriel Byrne. Yeah. Those two people, plus the strange behind the curtain Wizard of Oz, Doctor Phil who helped Oprah Winfrey in a very uh, complicated and highly publicized case 20 years ago and was a real game changer for her. And in fact, that's how Phil McGraw became Dr. Phil, was through Oprah Winfrey and through helping her. And then you have Steven Spielberg, who um, is a, one of the great storytellers of our time. And so for him to put his name on our show meant that we really had better live up to that. I can only imagine if we hadn't done well, season one. Can you imagine getting your house toilet papered by Spielberg's rogue team of uh, revenge seekers? Um, sitting with Steven Spielberg was probably uh, a, a highlight. That's a life highlight. And I loved um, his immediate understanding of what was important, what was elemental about the show and what would connect with an audience. And he has that instinct for relatability. Uh, and in the first, in the pilot episode, there was a large father-son component, which is a big thing in Spielberg's world and comes up over and over again. So that continues to be um, just one of the cooler aspects of Bull. My wife and I got to go see a screening of a documentary that he produced and was uh, participated in called Five Came Back. And it's just pretty cool when, um, when Steven Spielberg says, Michael, and you go, hi boss. <laughs> hi boss. Oh, yeah. Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it, I mean, it must be an exciting time, obviously for your show, but also working in television, because there's so much going on in television. There's so much kind of talent being drawn to television now. Is it, for you as an actor, is it, is it good to see so many people embracing so many different aspects of television and watching it in various different ways, whether it's on Five USA or whether it's on you know, in America and obviously on demand and everything else? Is that, have you enjoyed the fact that there's so much going on in television these days? Mm. Yeah, I think that there, there is, uh, and we have the UK to thank, I think, for the, the new kind of television that's coming. Um, I mean, House of Cards literally was a was a British series, and then Netflix and and a lot of the um, the streaming and cable services have created, um, and even broadcast TV, the, the the big networks in the United States have have come to understand that you can tell stories in six episodes or ten episodes or thirteen episodes. What I love about the we did twenty three last year. We may do 24 this year. I did 310 episodes of NCIS before I had to turn my badge in. What I love about telling stories on a larger scale and a longer um, timeline is you, you really get gr a great pattern going. Um, and I think that f the kind of television I grew up on, which, which Bull is, is a more classic mold of storytelling uh, it, Magnum P.I. and shows like that. I, I am drawn to those in a way that um, the whole family can sit down on the couch and watch it and you know that a vampire isn't going to stick a, something through your head or you know somebody's not going to do some behavior that's um, impossible to explain to your seven-year-old. Uh, Bull is my kind of show. It's, it's about um, why we do the things we do and understanding um, each other's 
perspectives. And I think especially in the world we live in today, that makes it, uh, may I even suggest, but it's, it's an important show. <laughs> and also you're going back to do uh, season two very shortly. What are you hoping from season two uh, in terms of changing your character and everything else? Yeah, I think season two is going to be about deepening our understanding of Bull and his team. I think season one spent a great deal of time understanding the world of trial science and how does that work, and especially for foreign audiences that may not have a jury system. So uh, you, you want to explain to them that it's really like a focus group for advertising. You have a group of people, you gotta find out which ones like to floss and which ones don't think that flossing has anything to do with dental health. And uh, they, they may be right, in fact. Um, but um, <laughs> what we try to do, or I was laughing because maybe if you were involved in an election, say, and you were trying to understand how uh, a certain population might vote on something, if that was important. Um, understanding how human beings can be um, manipulated a little bit into moving like, well, try this new toothpaste, try this new politician, try this new TV show. Go. Um, this, is, uh, this is what the bull is at its heart all about, is uh, we, as human beings, love to see patterns, and we love when a pattern emerges, not only that makes uh, sense, but makes sense to our worldview and makes us feel better about that worldview. Fantastic. Well, listen, I wish you all the success with season one and season two, and thank you so much for your time. It's, a, it's a deep pleasure and a privilege. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!